Now we're going to analyze that same falling motion and the torque that creates the falling motion, but the ring will be spinning. So let's draw it first. So here's the surface. Here's the ring at an angle, just like before. And just like before, there's mg pulling it down at its center of mass. This is your point of contact. So we're thinking about rotation around that point. So there's your r. So sure enough, you have a torque here due to the gravitational force. The difference is now it's spinning. Now it's going around this way, coming around that way. So it has its own, independent of what's happening down here with the gravity, it has its own angular momentum in addition to what's going to be created by gravity. Okay, so let's remember torque causes a change in the angular momentum according to the equation torque is dl dt, the rotational version of Newton's second law. But what's different now from before is before the ring was not spinning at all, L was zero. And all the torque had to do was create an L as it fell over. Now we have something different. Now let's look at the ring kind of from up here and think about its L vector, okay? So now if we look at it from there, and we'll say it has some initial L like this. Oh. Li. And let's say in some small time, dt, we create a little dl. Or we can just look at the vector dl dt. If we look from here, down there's L. Which way is the torque? It's this way. dl dt. It's to the side. Right? So let's say after some time t, what is going to happen? After some dt, some differentially, you know, little infinitesimal time dt, it's going to look something like this. You're going to have li, and you're going to add this, so you're going to have a little uh, dl up here, and then you're going to have lf. That's sort of your vectors. That's what happens in dt. You can see that since it's small, it's like turning. It's like moving L over. So it's doing the exact same thing. When the ring isn't spinning, it's adding a little L uh, angular momentum this way. That caused it to fall down. But when it is spinning, it's already got a big angular momentum. It's still adding a little bit this way, but the vector sum, the result of the vector sum is different. Instead of just creating angular momentum that way, you have to add it to this larger angular momentum that already exists. So all it's doing when we look down is it's turning LF a little bit. Looking down, it's going to the left. Looking this way, it's going into the board. It's pushing it that way. But then there's one more point to notice, is that for infinitesimal L, uh, DL and DT, DL is always perpendicular to L, OK? So you can see the way I drew it here, if we had a teeny little angle here, DL is basically perpendicular to both Li and LF. Right on the limit that this angle goes to zero, DL is perpendicular to both of them. So you have the case that the change of this L vector is always perpendicular to its direction. And that is a case that ends up with circular motion. That's the thing about circular motion, just a mass going in a circle. It has a velocity tangent to the circle, and its acceleration is always perpendicular to its velocity. So basically, uh, the same thing happens here, is the torque changes the direction of L, but not the magnitude. All it does is turn it. So that's what causes this thing to go around in a circle. The L points this way, and it kind of goes around like this. And that's what precession is. Or if we're looking this way, well, if you're looking at a plane, you would see it go around. But then your eye would have to follow it around. So it, basically, it's hard to draw. It goes in a circle like that. And we can kind of see this when we spin our ring. Okay, So here we go. I'm going to take the ring. And when you spin it, sure enough, it doesn't fall as fast. But there's something else to notice. It's going in a circle. Right? As it goes in that circle, if you think about its L vector, if I slow it down a little bit, you can see that it goes in a circle. See the L vector points in and it goes around, even on this rough table. Um, 
I can also help convince you that that's precession because I can spin it the other way, right? If I spin it the other way, it goes around the other way. Spin it that way, goes around that way. Spin it this way, goes around that way. Now to really label this and calculate it as precession is hard because this is a very complicated motion. The thing is tilted, the friction forces are pushing the ring, that's why it moves in a circle rather than just have the case of this point remain fixed and the thing move in a circle. Okay? To calculate exactly what that motion would be like, we need something a little bit fancier than just spinning a ring. But the, the, the basis of the effect is the source of the circular motion of the ring is essentially precession. It is just the angular momentum being turned by the gravitational torque. We'll do a more precise object next where we can actually calculate the rate of precession.